During this period, I analyzed, rationalized, and tried to understand what was happening without success. I blamed myself and sought out faults that prevented him telling me. He had put me in the position of having to be tested against my will. I never wanted to know if I was carrying HIV. The feelings of betrayal were so acute, I could not entertain my own reasonings, and I felt so emotionally frazzled and petrified beyond belief. I earnestly hoped his explanation would be plausible, though I was clutching at any straw to stay sane. What awful horrors faced us, I naively believed there still was an us. My worst nightmare was in print before my eyes, and I was overwhelmed by confusion, fear, and a physical sensation that I was about to be sick, but my legs felt like jelly. I wanted to speak to the Samaritans, but did not have a number. Hello? Hi, Mark. Oh, honey, of course I'm going to be there tonight. If I, honey, if I'm going to be wearing pine over chiffon, I'll be at that party. Uh-huh. Okay. Bye. something to camouflage a multitude of sins. Here's a fairy queen I've been For years I've foiled the demon king Nobody loves a fairy when she's 40 Nobody loves a fairy when she's old she may still have her magic power, but that is not enough. They like their bit of magic from a younger bit of stuff. Once your silver star has lost its glitter, and your tinsel looks like rust instead of gold. Your fairy days are ending when your wand has started bending. No one loves a fairy when she's old. It was I who put Aladdin in the cave that wasn't there. It was I that made it. Bolt as an egg. You know, it's a little bit, she's a little bit orangey made up there, but it's, you know, you can see it's plain. There's no multicolored eyeshadows and stuff like that. Okay, so. I'm choosing to go as Lana. She starred in a movie once called The Imitation of Life. All right. And in a way, I'm imitating life tonight because I feel shit. <sighs> Do you know what's a shame, Kate? Is, you know, I'm really glad you're here because I don't think I've ever got dressed to go to a fancy dress on my own. There's always been a bit of fun and a few drinks going around. It's hard to believe they're all dead. So long ago. Have you ever thought of going in for embalming, Kate? <laughs> I'll keep you on a retainer. <laughs> Do you know, when I was first diagnosed, I used to feel like I had AIDS written on my forehead. And people could read it off me when I walked down the street. They couldn't, I mean, I was just being paranoid, but... You just, you get, you get that feeling. You need a steady hand here. Okay, hon. You can have a look. Is that any better? Kind of like questioning. Or... <laughs> Quizzical. Still. It's better than it was. It's beginning to sort of look less ravaged. 
I think you need more makeup on your eyes. Do you think? Maybe some of that gold would. A little bit. Try putting it on after the um, after the eyelashes. eyelashes. I don't have an upper lip. So I am British. There's nothing stiff there. It's hard to do. Do you find it difficult putting your varnish on on your own? It took me years to perfect it. Okay. Just, yeah. <laughs> Not the lipstick on Jungle the red. <laughs> no, it's all right. I just mean I can't see the side of your nails. So long as people don't draw attention to my condition and health tonight. It's not a subject to be discussed. I don't want to be blabbing about sickness in hospitals. Mm -mm. It's meant to be a glamorous evening and I want to really sort of be part of it. A bit too frightening for me. <laughs> What's too frightening for you? <laughs> uh, we need the dress, please, quick. <gasps> Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Right, now. What next? What do you think? There may be trouble. Here's to life and the millennium. <laughs>